It's always been called Kenya, I have seen. It was formed originally in 1898. Grassroots football is an amateur division open to all ages and skill. Grassroots has become an integral part of local communities. However, despite this, clubs are under threat due to the pressure of high running costs and limited funding. And I've been playing grassroots football since I was 10 years old. It is vital that we keep these clubs alive. I'm the uh, coach for Kirby Lonsdale, who are playing uh, Cartmel today. And uh, unfortunately we're getting beat too well. <laughs> I've been doing grassroots football since I was about 10. Uh, when I finished under 16's football, there was no other leagues to go into after that and they recommended that I might be able to do a little bit of coaching side, so I started out on the local team, Loon Valley, when I run an under 14's team quite successfully in the first season and then I sort of got head on it. For me, it uh, just evolved from being a local player to administrator and all the way through. It's not just about the, the 11 players, it's not just about Jimmy and, and, and the leaders assistants, it's around the community that are involved that come and watch. It's also a good thing to get away, like get away from problems and stuff like that. It's just a nice release. There was a guy. There was a guy last year. Um, and the bad thing is I don't know his surname, but it was called Clive, and he, he died. He was 88 years old. And he never played football for Kane. He lived in the village all his life. Never was a footballer, and he hadn't missed a game at Kane for 70 years. Watched every single game. And it was only when his wife died that he missed his first game. And you know that to me is just what it's about. You just look at the photographs on the wall. You've got families that have played right the way through the sort of late 1800s and, and now are still involved in the club. You know, it, it, it does run right through the community. You can see the size of leagues now are smaller. It's higher than council pitch a season, be it's about 800 pounds a season. Clubs just can't find that sort of money. The German teams, like Premier Bundesliga teams, were, were told they had to invest in grassroots football. Um, so that had a knock-on effect, so there was loads of these 3G pitches created. So the younger, so the younger generation were playing on these pitches, improving their standard and their, their ability. And that's like had a knock-on effect and the German team won the World Cup. I suppose when I was like eight years old and I was watching Steven Gerrard play football for Liverpool, I wanted to emulate what he had done. But like 90% of people that are going to like start playing football and like you're never going to make it. And it's just a bit of fun at the end of the day for a lot of people. So it's definitely important that like Small clubs such as this one stay stay open for the general public. I've had um, six years coaching experience in Spain. One thing I'd say there is the facilities were absolutely fantastic. Which is why the young Spanish players uh, are more skillful on, on the whole than the English players uh, when it comes to passing and uh, ball skills. Because you see, the, the kids won't know unless they coach properly. I think we miss a lot of talent from the from the schools coming up to uh, this sort of level. You know, I don't think we do enough scouting as well. England have always been 10, 15 years behind Holland when, when they introduced Corver and, and things like that. And I know the FA are trying to improve it, but I don't think that there's enough scope or funding for from the FA from the top right down to the bottom, I think it gets separated far too high with the ladder. Every, every year there's five or six games that get caught from rain, or snow, or ice. Just, yeah, weather gets in the way a lot, especially in winter time. 3G pitches are notoriously expensive. To even like for a third of a pitch, it's 20 pounds upwards to play on. So that's a bit, it's a bit extortionate. But I do think more pitches would be better. Grassroots football would improve a lot if 3G pitches were more readily available. I think the coaching is the most important side. Is you can have all like the best facilities in the world, but if you, if you don't know how to play football, you're not going to become good. I think the visibility of co quality coaches is really visible. Uh, when you see young players coming through, particularly sort of 17, 18, 19 years old, who have played junior football, um, have not been coached adequately. When they do get exposed to somebody who is a qualified coach like James is, um, they're astounded. And to me that paints quite big pictures about the, the gap in quality coaching in junior football. You get too many, far too many teams that are run by dads and parents who, who are doing it because, maybe because they want to, but a lot of times maybe because they have to and there's nobody else there to run it. One of the things about having grass facilities is you've got to maintain it. And if you're an independent club, you're not a local authority club, or playing on a local authority pitch, it costs a lot of money. I mean, just to maintain our grass pitch there is about £3,000 a year. And you've got to find that. There's no funding for that. We have to raise that ourselves. I wouldn't do it if it was just about football. You know.
I do it you know, as part of my contribution to the community. Absolutely.